I understand there's reluctance. There always is with a bold new step. But if it turns out that no network is interested, we'll just have to see what Dick Bailey and his friend Howard Hughes will do. The figure is 72 million. Pardon me? 72 million to extend the contract. 72 million? Mm -hmm. For CBS or NBC, maybe, but what's my number? Well, we're not going to make this personal. I mean, my owners are looking for a big boost here, and ABC has the premier package. So I get the premier screwing. I know what the advertising market will bear. I know what your production costs are. I know what your markup is. We made you the national pastime, and now you're handing me a bill. 72 million, Rune. Work your magic. Yeah, well, when you pop, you can't stop. Oh, and you're carrying low. It's definitely a boy. Well, whatever it is, you've obviously begun that slippery slide into obesity. Ah, oh, well, you had a nice run there, didn't you, champ? Yeah, thanks. Uh, wait till you have a daughter. This beautiful little bundle of joy with a ponytail and freckles. And then one day, she's going to walk through your front door with a pimple-faced little shit, with 20-year rings and zero manners, and she's going to proceed to tell you how much she loves him because he reminds her so much of you. Now, this, my friend, will be one of the worst moments of your life. I have to get married by Christmas Eve. What? Otherwise, I stop being Santa Claus. What? You, you can't stop being Santa Claus. I don't want to stop being Santa Claus. This Kids are 86% happier since you've taken the job. My sinuses are as open as a church on Christmas. Just listen to me breathe. You hear the air moves in and out? I'd like to move his air in and out. That's what caused my colon crisis. Colon crisis. Keep it together. Hey. Hey, Roscoe. Yeah, talk loud. I'm in the healing waters here. Excuse me, sir. This is a quiet place. Well, Hold on, Roscoe. What was that? Nothing. It's just that when they asked me to check my gun, they explained it was because this is a quiet, peace-loving place. So why do I have to hear about your stock portfolios, let alone your colon crisis? You had to check your gun. Who are you? Never mind me. Hey, listen, buddy, I have a right to talk. I'm conducting business here. Maybe you're free to lounge around, but some of us, we have to work for a living. Oh, I don't work for a living? Yeah, no, 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 I'm still here, Roscoe. There's some girly man here in the spa who's in my face, like I need this. Helen. Oh, have a seat, have a seat. I don't want to say anything. What, you don't think Gagne is sympathetic enough? Oh, she's a good cop. <sighs> But I've talked to her. Being tough, it's just a thing with her. I don't blame her. She's a woman. So they assign her to DV and child welfare and rape. Like, that's a woman's job. A woman who's been... Yeah, I know. Feels more comfortable talking to another woman. Yeah. But Gagné? Well, I've got bigger stones than most guys. All due respect, Captain. I'd be better fielding these questions. Mm. These people know me. They see me around. She's put in for narcotics. Kicking down doors. Well, she'd be good at that. <sighs> Courage is rightly assumed the first of human qualities because it guarantees all others. You know who said that? Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill. When I teach uh, my WW2 course, I spend the first two weeks on Churchill and the next two on Hitler and Hirohito. That's an interesting approach. Can't understand America unless you understand its allies and enemies. That's true. You have to understand the concept. I can offer nothing but my blood, toil, sweat, and tears. Churchill, again. What can I get you, sir? Another margarita, senorita. Mm -hmm. I'm fine, thanks. Club soda? Sure. Well, you don't drink, Max? Mm -mm. What is it, like a religious thing or just being frugal? <laughs> Come on, have a real drink with me. Club soda's a real drink. Look, it's got bubbles and everything. Well, you're on the wagon? I tried that once. I, I didn't like all those meetings. I didn't like all those steps. But you knock yourself out. Have extra line. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jerry. And I've got to take a leak. Get over here! All right. They're over there! Yeah. You're over here! What are you doing? Sorry, Coach. Are you trying to uh, kill me? I take it you were never in the Army. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a stupid question. Well, then help me out. Okay. You see this kid up in the stands here? That's Lou Russ. 
he was the greatest halfback this school ever had. And I had to toss him off the team because of his grades. And now I'm about to lose him for wrestling if I don't get him up. Bill, what are we talking about? What do you want me to do? Take his tests for him? No. But I bet if he played in your band, I could talk Jacobs into giving him an academic credit. And then I'll help you out here. What instrument does he play? He doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't play anything. <laughs> what, are you kidding? No, he'll fit right in. <laughs> you feel that? Hmm. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. <laughs> but I'm finding myself strangely aroused. You're not wearing panties, are you? What's it like for you to work with the other legendary figures in this movie? I find them to be weak. Weak? Very weak. I'm watching them, I'm seeing them. Santa Claus, I like. I like him as a person, but uh, uh, he's very, you know, he's changeable. I don't, know, I don't know if I can trust him. I wish it had been called the Easter Bunny. I always thought there was a story here. Best story I've ever heard. When I was a disc jockey in um, Charlotte, North Carolina, I used to open car dealerships. Mm -hmm. And Clayton Moore, the Lone Ranger, would open the, it was Dodge or something like that, or Plymouth. And I would go and I would announce, and Clayton Moore came to the, to the Dodge, to the dealership. So I'm there, and really long hair, and, and we are, I tell you this, my friend uh, Mike Martin and I are herbed up. We're all herbed up. <laughs> and, and we're selling the cars, you know, come on in, and you'll yeah. get the kids, and you'll meet the Lone Ranger. And he says, look, he gets all upset, and he wears the whole outfit and the glasses and the whole thing. Get this, I mean, the mask, the whole, he was very seriously into the Lone Ranger. So uh, he says, look, can you give me a ride? I said, sure, we'll give you a ride. So we get in my Volvo, and we're driving in 5 o'clock traffic in, uh, in Charlotte, and we're all like this, and he's in the back seat, and we stop at a stop sign, and a guy wants to get out of the traffic. He backs a car up, and he hits the front of my car, and I beep the thing, and I can hear the, the light break, and he pulls away, and he drives up, so I turn to Volvo, and I start chasing the guy through the streets, and I got the Lone Rangers in the back seat going like this. So we're driving through the streets. We're completely stoned. We're chasing the guy, chasing the guy through the streets. He pulls up, and I pull over, and I get in front of him wow. like that. Wow. He gets out. He's this, like, a Trent Lott kind of guy, uh -huh. Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> he gets out of the car, and I said, hey, man. Mike Martin gets out. I said, hey, man, you hit my car back there. He says, I didn't do any damn thing to you two. I said, yes, you did. And I said, you know what? I'm going to call the cops. He said, who do you think they're going to believe, me or you two hippies? Uh -huh. And the Lone Ranger gets out of the back of the car, <laughs> and he says, They'll believe me. <laughs> and the guy, the swear to God, the guy goes like this. He goes, I didn't know it was you. That is so good.